Hi everyone and welcome. My name is Alice Kulsa and this is our interview series on transcending trauma where we look at trauma from a multidimensional perspective and tools and resources and deeper understandings on how to navigate and journey through this complex devastating issue and also how trauma shows up in its different manifestations. And um, I am here today with uh, Deborah Cox, my uh, co-pilot and uh, a dear mentor of mine. And, um, and I'd love for you to introduce yourself, Deb, in just a sec. And we are here today with our special guest, Dr. Arlene Drake, um, who is a pioneer in the field of trauma and uh, abuse and um, helping people find a way out. And we're going to talk about her book today, Carefrontation, and have a deep dive. So. Welcome, Arlene. Thanks for being Thank here. You. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. And maybe Deb, you could introduce yourself a bit, and then Arlene will will hand it over to you and dive in. Okay. Hi, Hi everyone. Uh, Deborah Cox, uh, also known as Deb Avatar for uh, that community. Um, right now, um, I'm really exploring and uh, learning and studying the whole field of somatic healing. And this is a part of the trauma healing that is kind of what I always consider the missing link. It's always good to have that cognitive behavior. It's good to have the, the you know, getting in touch with the inner child. And, but this is kind of like that little piece of the puzzle that was always missing for me. And this is where we really dive in and explore how trauma has physically affected our body and where we hold it. So that's what I do. I really focus on the somatic aspects of healing from trauma and it's deep, deep work. And uh, I find that through that coupled with the cognitive and the inner child and everything and the yoga, everything that we do here at Radiant Being, it, it's, it, it completes the package. It completes the package. Uh, so I'm really excited to bring that work, uh, which was developed by Peter Levine uh, and uh, is really becoming more and more prevalent in the mental health field. They're finally opening up and really acknowledging how important this is, <coughs> the overall healing process. So that's what I do. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Deb. You're welcome. And um, today, uh, we've been doing an interview series, probably over about the past year or so, really looking at different dimensions, perspectives, and uh, seeing how trauma shows up and impacts us. And um, this is why we have uh, Dr. Arlene Drake here today. And so as we were getting ready for the interview, the, the thing that really came forward with us to share today is um, we're going to talk about the pandemic that nobody's talking about. Yeah. And the pandemic that nobody's talking about is the overwhelming prevalence and systemic sexual abuse that's happening right now. And we're going to focus even just in America. And so, um, Arlene, I'd love if you could introduce yourself and then we'll just, we'll dive in. Hi, I'm Dr. Arlene Drake. I've been doing this work for 38 years. Mm -hmm. um, when I first started, they thought that maybe one in 10,000 girls would be sexually abused or incested by someone they knew. And um, of course, that's not true. Uh, we know now that it's one in, uh, one in three girls will be sexually abused by the time she's 18 by uh, either a family member or someone she perceives as a family member or someone close, and one in about five or six boys. So that's come a long way from 10, 000, one in 10,000. Um, and it is a pandemic. It's something that people don't talk about. We're talking about it now. And as you know, you've been talking about it. So people never looked for it and people didn't want to see it. And what I hope we're doing is opening people's eyes to really look at it now and call it out because this is not being called out. People tend to protect the perpetrator. And uh, even mothers who know that their daughters have been abused, sexually abused by the father or uh, stepfather or whoever, I've had them in my office and they don't want to look at it and they don't want to believe it. And if they do, it's, I've had them tell my client, you know, how could you do that to us? 
like telling this truth about the horrible thing that was done to her is doing something to them. It's it just, it's, it's unfathomable. So I've been doing this a long time and I've come upon a, I have a, um, I have a book out as uh, Alice said, Care for Intation, which shows my steps of this process. It's been developed over the years and I, you know, I use right hand, left hand writing. I, I, I use psychodynamic and I use CBD. And I think what's important here is that I didn't invent any of these things, but the way I put it together and the way I give homework each week, I have a beginning, a middle and an end. And I really get people to the other side and graduate people, which is sort of unheard of in, in therapy. So I, I, like to call this, I like to call this the end of endless therapy. And it's been exciting for me. And this is what makes it worthwhile is being able to see a graduation and see these great women. I don't know what else to say right now. But, that's, you know. that's amazing. Thank you, Arlene. And, um, you know, I will, I will speak for myself, but I will say that I came to Arlene. How many years ago? Is it like eight years, maybe? At least. At I least. Know. Maybe eight to nine years ago. And um, came into her office. And I can tell you after working in the world of recovery, which is a foundation for me, and then what I'm calling now, um, which is another conversation, but Aquarian yoga and breath, I started putting these pieces together. And, and then um, I heard about Arlene from a friend of a friend. It was like a very synchronistic situation. And I came into her office and I, I really found that it was like the next piece in my healing to create a really comprehensive and also like structurally sound model for um, processing uh, early childhood trauma. And, um, and Deb, anything you want to share about your story or your experience? Well, yeah, I was just thinking back as you were saying how many years ago. Uh, and I remember this, again, through a friend of a friend. Right. I heard about Arlene. I make the phone call, make the appointment. I'm driving and to the office. And it was, I literally, it was the first time I ever experienced a panic attack, what I feel like. And I don't know why or, or what it was about other than the fact that I knew what I was about to do was going to be big. I was about to confront myself. Right. Remember? Yeah. And so I'm sitting in Arlene's waiting room and I'm like, like this. And all of a sudden this head pops out of the door with this beautiful red hair and says, Deborah. And I'm like, yeah, I look up. Yeah. <laughs> She sticks her hand up, she shakes my hand, she pulls me in, and that was the beginning of, it was, I mean, that was the beginning of the, par the shift in my whole, my whole paradigm. And I'm going to say this, it requires courage. It requires yeah. so much courage to take, to pick up that phone, to take that, I'm sure you can relate to this, Alice, just as much, to pick up that phone and to stick with it no matter what. I get so right. many of my own clients who will start the process, but then right whenever things start coming up, they start getting, I call them the dry heaves, emotional <laughs> dry heaves, and they're like, <gasps> and they, they, they back out. And I understand we all have our process, but I, I just, Arlene, just, I'm just going to turn it back over to you. I could keep going forever. <laughs> uh, it's an amazing you. process. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. But well, what I can I what I want to say is thanks to my two young daughters here, um, <laughs> where I started. You two, with all of the new things coming out, are adding to it, which is incredible because some of this stuff, thirty eight years ago, thirty five, even ten years ago, was it known and was it used? And mm -hmm. it's wonderful to see <clears throat> my young kids coming in and, and and taking over and and helping to build this more. I mean, it just it just. Um, I don't know what to say. I, <laughs> I could cry, but I just, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful thing to see. Oh, thank you. Likewise, I'm like getting super emotional. It's a reunion. <laughs> it's a reunion. Yeah. <clears throat> and, um, these, these two women, I mean, they, um, they were a big part of saving my, my soul and my life. And that's, that's why we're all really here today because we share a common mission and that mission is how do we support, um, 
individuals that have suffered the devastating effects of trauma of early childhood abuse or abuse at any point in your life. And also how do we support giving, helping those to find a courage to have a voice that maybe feel like they've lost their voice. And, and another piece today that's really coming forward is a conversation too around sex trafficking and around, we were just looking at the statistics, but 2000 children a day go missing every single day in the United States. So having these conversations that are, are some of the most, if our children are not the most beloved, precious beings on the planet, then I don't know what is. And, and so this is really a union of coming together, really of standing for children and also standing for the adults that have survived uh, childhood abuse. Right. And so Arlene, does it, um, how does it feel to maybe talk about some of the after effects or some of the, the symptoms that you see of people coming in, navigating um, early childhood abuse? Well, you know, I see, I see a lot of people, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of people have had um, addictions because of this. It brought out, you know, um, <clears throat> it's brought out their addictions um, a lot of people have not really achieved, they could never finish what they start. So they may have had great opportunities and have taken it, but then they let it go because they, they don't feel good enough about themselves. Many people just have a tough time having any intimate relationships. It's really difficult to have an intimate relationship when you have a kid inside of you that says, no, no, I don't want to get close to anybody. I know what happened. You know, in our mind, we want that relationship, but inside that kid says, no, you don't know what it's like, and I'm not going to get hurt again. And then we wonder, well, why can't I have an intimate relationship? So those are just some of the things. And it's just feeling bad about ourselves constantly, feeling like we're worthless, feeling like we're just, uh, we shouldn't be alive. Uh, th these are terrible things. And we're born into this world, a child of God, and we're perfect. But this is what happens. Thank you so much for speaking that what you said around like not even feeling like I should be alive. Right. You know, and um, it was actually Deb that um, referred this book to me, Anna Dia Judith, um, who talked about Eastern body, Western mind. And she talks about like the root chakra, the root energy center. And it's inherent right is that I have a right to be here. Right. And I think that you just really hit the nail on the head by saying trauma robs us of really feeling like we even belong on earth. Right. Maybe right. both of you could speak to that a bit more. Anything, anything to expand on that? Well, I've seen a lot of people come in, and um, it breaks my heart when they don't, when they tell me that they they don't feel like they belong here, that they're that they're so wrong. Like I'm wrong. My everything about me is wrong. I'm bad. I'm wrong. I don't deserve this. And you know, the question isn't, you know, I don't, it's not what's wrong with you. The question should be, what happened to you? That will tell the story. There's nothing wrong. You may have, have issues, right? Okay. But it's not like you're wrong. And that's how people feel. And when you feel that way, it's hard to get up out of bed and do what you have to do and have any faith in yourself to take, to take whatever path you have to take to accomplish what you want to be the, the person you were meant to be. And, and that's really sad. I think uh, a lot of that too comes from, I know within my own experience, <clears throat> I was uh, uh, in the family uh, uh, environment that I grew up in. I was, I was always considered the one in the wrong. Right. <clears throat> and in fact, that's how my perpetrators, they groomed me so that I would innately believe that there was something wrong inside of me and that I would be the one who would get into trouble, not them. Right. I would get into trouble, so I would not speak. And so how that manifested physically in my body by not being able to speak my truth, I couldn't even swallow pills. And I would, I would begin to choke just out of the blue, my, my, my throat would seize up and I'd just start choking, <gasps> like literally could not breathe. My husband had to form, perform the Heimlich maneuver on me like two or three times. Oh. So that's one way that it would show up in me, manifest in me, is just, <laughs> and then I couldn't breathe. By the time I got through my process working with Arlene, 
I can pop three or four pills at one time now. So that's the healing process right there. That's a part of my healing process. I can swallow. And not only that, I feel in control of my throat. And I'm able to speak and articulate in a way that I was never able. That's not to say I wasn't able to talk. Because maybe I talked about <laughs> But now I can actually articulate complete sentences. <laughs> right. And and thank you for saying that, Deb, because I'm looking here and we'll post it in the post here. But what are some of the, the basic checklist of after effects of, of sexual abuse? And we're going to zero in now on sexual abuse. And Arlene handed me this list when I first came in. Yeah. And, and it was like the first time, I always say this, it was like there's these stars in the sky of these weird symptoms, like weird phobias, weird alienation from body, um, you know, uh, gastrointestinal disorders, you name it. And I felt like this after abuse checklist finally was like, no, this is a whole constellation. And it's, it's actually one, one constellation of the different effects of how abuse shows up. And just as Deb said, literally the first after effect on the sexual abuse uh, checklist is swallowing and gagging sensitivity. And I had the very same thing, tongue depressors, anything around my dick. It, it um, really, really triggered that, that gagging sensitivity and reflex. So we'll post this list for you below so you can see it and just begin. For me, it was like one of these things of like, I'm not crazy. Yes. Right? right. I'm not, excuse my language, cover your ears of your kids, but I'm not <laughs> fucked up either. Right. There's something really deep. Like Arlene was saying, what happened? Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. What happened? Yeah. 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 Right. It's such an important question. Yeah. No, go ahead. Yeah. So Arlene, maybe could you talk to us when um, a little bit about your process and about the inner child? Because a lot of people, when they hear inner child, they, I know for me, I was like, oh, you know, at first, or it can, it can make right. you very uncomfortable. And, and I wonder if you could kind of share with us your perspective and, and maybe also share with us how you work with that inner child. Okay, well, um, you know, I just read somewhere, of course, I always believe this, but I read it somewhere now on some trauma. I don't know what I was on, but anyway, that um, <clears throat> unless you deal with the inner child, you're not going to heal your trauma. I believe that because everything else, if you don't deal with the root cause of something, if you don't build a foundation then to build the rest of your life, it will all fall through eventually. So um, my process is what I do is I give homework every week because I think, I think that's really important to keep people on track. Otherwise what happens, I, I get a lot of people who've been in therapy 15 or 20 years and they know a lot, but they're not feeling better and they're not doing different things. They're not acting differently. Um, that's because they're not connected. Their brain and their feelings in here are not connecting. So they have two different things going on. And um, I found that by doing this homework and keeping people on track, I was able to move them further along and to connect the two. And part of that is with the right hand, left hand writing, because that connects both sides of the brain. You know, one side of the brain has your feelings and artistic side, and the other side is all of your, you know, one and one or two, and I'm going to do the, you know, your logical, whatever. <clears throat> and usually they're, they're not together. They're sort of at uh, war with each other. So um, by doing that homework with right hand, left hand, it has you really getting in touch with that inner child and both sides sharing information. Otherwise, it's not sharing the information. You know, we actually have a demarcation in our brain. And so the two sides are very separate. So how do we get them and how do we get the, the left side to hear the right side? Because the right side has been going, hey, listen to me, listen to me. Okay, you're not going to listen to me. Okay, well, then we'll go do drugs. Okay, then we're going to do that. All right, we're going to screw up this relationship, whatever. And we don't know what's going on. So your inner child, that part that has the feelings and the knowledge, will come out when you use the right hand, left hand writing. And it doesn't matter whether you're right-handed or left-handed. People often ask me that, but it doesn't matter. You, you'll be amazed. And I just talked to somebody the other day who said he was just blown away because he thought this was just airy-fairy, whatever. But you're going to be blown away too. Just give it a chance. So what happens here is that you actually 
first of all, I have people write a commitment letter to their child because we have to be that child's hero. Nobody came up to the, stood up to the plate and said, I'm going to take care of you and I'm going to, I'm going to do the job. So we're the ones. And if you're ready to take on that job, then there's a way. So I have people write that commitment letter. And what would you say to that hurt kid or any hurt kid? What would you say? I'm, I'm going to be here to protect you. I'm going to be here to love you. I'm going to see you and hear you. That's really important. Just the simple things in life. I have them write the commitment letter. At first, they may not believe it, but that's okay. It gives us a little roadmap. And it's not as, as difficult. You know, what, how hard is it to see and hear a child? I guess our inner child, it may be a little more difficult. But if you keep at it, and I like to call what I do parenting classes, you're going to see that kid. And so it's not just working with that child once in a while and saying, okay, I met my inner child and fine. It's really building a relationship so that you're together and your whole life will change because you'll change here and here and you'll be at one with yourself. And that's the healing. And that's, that is the end of endless therapy. And from there, I'm not saying you'll never have a problem in life because you will, but you'll have tools to be able to get through them. And you're not starting from below sea level. You're starting from a place where, yeah, I could do this. So that's what I, so I just, I, I embrace different psychodynamic, uh, just different things and put it together. And I, and I give homework a certain way until I get you to where I have to get you. And I know where that is. And I get you there if you stick with me. <laughs> that's amazing, Arlene. And thank you for bringing in the conversation around the inner child and in that it's like parenting classes. Yes. Being the hero. And going to bat for for that kid, and right. um, I I was wondering if you could maybe speak to kind of the other component that you work with too, that the one who knows. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So I I have something I call the one who knows, and that's a part of us that we all have. It's cell memory. You know, we have cell memory that's come down from generations, and we know more than we think we know up here. Um, and a lot of times when there's a question or confusion, I have people write a letter to the one who knows, saying, asking for help, telling the one who knows what the situation is, and then having the one who knows right back with the non-dominant hand. And those have been really magnificent letters. And the direction and what people will find out about themselves and how really, how much they're able to take care of themselves is incredible when they listen to that one who knows, who does have information way beyond our years and way beyond just who we are, if we take the time to listen. And I love that, I love that part too. It's so amazing, it's so amazing. So I, I wanted to ask um, maybe both of you and, and just if somebody comes to you, because we see a lot of women, we have a um, private Facebook group called Transcending Trauma online and then working with clients or just interacting in the world we live in, in community, in, um, in the spaces that we're in, the circles that we're in, there are people that feel fundamentally broken. And um, how, and I'd love to get your opinion, Deb, and, and also Arlene, how do you approach someone? How, how does somebody get a sense of even being able to start this journey or embark on this journey if they know that they need help, but that they feel broken and maybe they feel like they can't be helped? And maybe any personal experience you have or yeah, any, anything to share about that? Arlene? Well, I, um, I'll tell you what's been told to me. You see, I have to have more belief than they have. Mm -hmm. I have to be the cheerleader. I have to be the one who says, I know you can do it. And I know a lot of times people come to me and they've been in 12 step programs and they're, and they're doing fine. They're doing their homework and they're doing fine. Well, if you could do that, then you could do my work. You know, there's nothing wrong with you. Yes, you have issues, but you're not, a, you're not a mentally ill. As, lo as long as the person is not mentally ill, that's another story. But if you have these issues and you feel these things, you're not mentally ill. These are issues you have. So I know, and I tell them, I have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And I, I have to be, if you'll trust me, and I know it takes a lot, and, you know, we could talk about it and argue about it along the way, you have to think of me as a helicopter flying over your life 
and you're trying to get through this jungle. You don't know the way out, so you keep getting lost. But I could fly over and I could say, whoa, wait a minute now. You need to stop for a second and take a sharp right here. Okay, just go a little bit more. And then, okay, stop now and now just go to the left a little bit. I could show you that path if you're willing to do the work. I know because I had many graduates. I could not be doing this work if I did not graduate people. So I know what I could do, but I need the person to do it with me. Because nobody, everybody could do it unless, unless they're mentally ill. I mean, that's, that's another story. So, and the people that come to me really are, they may be scary, but they're pretty damn strong. They just don't recognize it. Thank you for bringing that up about, uh... Um, oh, I forget what exactly you said. Oh, the, about the twelve step and the program. Right. Because, you know, that's I, I come from that that uh, that uh, whole area too. And to me, whenever someone says something like that to me, it's always like, "Well, you've already hit bottom. There's only one way to go now." <laughs> right, 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 right. right. <laughs> you know, right. so let's just start picking up the pieces. And, right. you know, we'll get the super glue and, you know, we'll just figure it out as we go along. I mean, right? I right. Mean, it's, it's like, but you have to start. But yeah. I also, I also, and I, I think I love the uh, optimism. And like you said, it's like for a while there, you know, we stand as that hope. Right. And yes. That, that in, into that that courage and we have to be that for a little while yes so they kind of it's kind of like a little foal who's just right. coming out and, and kind of stumbling around right. a little bit but then eventually they stand up and, <laughs> and sometimes they start standing up and running around and you're like wait a minute <laughs> right 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 that's ex that's exactly it that's exactly it it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful to, to hear about being a champion and holding that light, holding that ground for the other individual. And like you said, Deb, you've already hit bottom and hey, you've likely already done this work. And to, to that effect too, you've already experienced this abuse. You've already right. walked through the, the hardest part. Oh, yeah. So right. if you've done that, like you're saying, you're pretty damn strong. Yeah. Very. Right. If, if you went through that and you survived it and you're, you're alive, you're still on planet earth. Like I heard recently, planet earth is not for beginners. Oh, no. <laughs> this is, this is not like if you're maybe a baby soul, probably not where you start out. You know, <laughs> this is a, this is a planet that, that is um, really, really calling forth the, the deepest healing and, and excavation and, and search for truth and meaning and, and authenticity. Right. And, and you know what I found too, just like you two wonderful, beautiful women, um, there are, for whatever the world is going through and however it might be not that great, there are so many people that are willing to help and love you through this. So let us love you through it. Let us be, let us help you. Let us be the, you know, the wind beneath your wings. We will do it. Give us that opportunity to help you. I think that's really important. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank you, Arlene. Thank you. Any um, final thoughts or ideas or anything else y'all y'all want to bring forth today in our conversation? Well, I'm just going to say, get the book. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's it's well thought out. It's yes. well written. It's concise, articulate, and yet it's easy to read. She yes. Doesn't speak ten feet above your head. Mm -hmm. Arlene writes this in a way, like you see the front cover, it's a heart. It's a heart. It speaks to the heart. And so I, I highly recommend this book for anyone who is uh, kind of thinking about stepping out over the, over the ledge. This is, this is a good way to start. So I'm pushing that. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So don't hold yourself back. Take that leap of faith because there are many people who will love you through it and help you. Thank you, Arlene. And thank you. I, I want to share there's, um, we want to just uh, leave you with resources and ways to get support. And um, one thing that we've done is come together and um, as, as, a, as a Trinity, and we have several other coaches, another graduate from, from Arlene's group, 
um, a psychotherapist and another coach and five women have come together and uh, created a container called the Radiant Rebirth where it weaves together Arlene's inner child work. It weaves together the somatic practice, weaves together Aquarian yoga, principles of recovery, conscious partnership, uh, first with self, self-intimacy, also principles of intuitive eating. And it's a comprehensive six month process that uh, women are in right now. And we're seeing really incredible transformation in their lives. And um, I, I think so much of our work together, as Arlene was saying, is like, because there are so many new sciences and new developments in the arenas of trauma, yeah. in particular embodied practices and somatic practices. And then that just the influx of Eastern um, teachings and wisdom too, that's just been um, weaving together with psychology that we're in a really interesting time in the, in the hero, healing process, not to mention the develops, developments in neuroscience. So the new understanding right. of neuroplasticity and new possibilities of healing. And then and now plant medicines being introduced into, you know, so it's just this unbelievable fabric and this weaving together of healing. So if this is something that resonates, um, uh, I will have a link below, but it's just uh, my name, Alice Kulsa, you can see it there, dot com forward slash apply to uh, set up an appointment. And then I also want to give a shout out individually with Arlene as she works with individuals. So she's a part of, uh, of this container and she also hosts her own groups as well as works individually one on one. It is a deeply profound experience. And as well as you can pick up a copy of her book too, Carefantation, just as Deb said. Mm -hmm. And then the, the third is also working one-on-one -on -one with Deb in the somatic realm and really focusing in on the, um, uh, on the, the deep body knowing. Yeah, right. definitely. The physical releasing of the trauma. The physical releasing of the trauma. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, because that's why so many people have, have uh, different ailments, sicknesses, yeah. because it's all held in the body. And before, years ago, they used to call it psychosomatic and, you know, something is wrong with your mind. Well, no, no, it really affects the body. Yes, it really does. It really so. does. And the body keeps the score. Yes, it does. <clears throat> yes, it does. Yeah. So we offer you, we'll offer resources below, uh, ways to be in touch. And um, we, and there's also one announcement I wanted to make too, as we had lightly touched on, um, this um, unfathomable number of children that are missing every day in the United States. And um, my husband is going to be putting on, it's just, and I haven't even told y'all about this yet, but it's a fundraiser. And all the proceeds are gonna go, 100% of the proceeds will go to this beautiful foundation called OUR, Operation Underground Railroad, which oh. is recovery missions for, for children. And also, um, uh, do process, like not do process, but they also go in and they find perpetrators and they um, basically take them to court and help uh, to end these sex rings and different things that are happening. So it's an incredible organization. We're going to be doing a fundraiser. It's going to be on John Lennon's birthday. It's called Imagine Fest, of course, right? <laughs> My husband loves oh, I love John Lennon. It. I love it. So um, I, we will also put details about that, that below. But there's just multiple ways for your own healing, um, for your own education, and also for ways to get involved in, in, in the global healing that's happening. Yes. So thank, thank you. you. Mm, please. Thank you. I, I believe that uh, this work is the key to global healing. Yes. yes. I, I really believe that. This is the foundation. Yes. If we don't stop the abuse, then I feel like we're just in the cycle yes yes where we this is how yes. we do it this is how if you want to know how this is how we're going to do it yes all right thank you so much for saying that deb there's this amazing quote that says like the the number one way you know that the largest way you can be an activist is to heal your unresolved trauma definitely couldn't agree more <sighs> thank, thank you ladies. have a beautiful day and uh we hope that you uh enjoyed this video and really got something out of it and each of us is here in your corner and we have your back. Yes. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye.